Welcome to our posts today, we will see stories of r slash malicious compliance. Was denied two days of paid tow, so I took off a whole month. When I worked corrections, I requested for two weeks off, I had been there for years and accrued plenty of paid leave, it was given to me as I had done so months in advance for a personal event. The two weeks went by way too quick. I had specifically lined up my two-week break to lead into my two days off at the beginning of the break and at the end so I could maximize my time off. However, during my normal off days a family emergency came up that was quite serious so I asked for another two days off to handle my situation. I was told by my direct supervisor that there was no way she was approving that because we are only allowed to use 84 hours of leave in one continuous block given our rotating written schedules and 12-hour shifts, this equaled two weeks, and she ordered me to come in the next day or I would receive a write-up. I didn't argue because I knew she was correct. So I showed up that night and reported for my shift and much to my surprise, my captain had called out sick so a relief captain came in to fill her shift. I asked him to give me the next day off after my shift was over. He and I had a rapport given the number of years we've worked with each other previously, and so he looked at the schedule and my leave. He said, You know you've got plenty of leave, right? Yes, I know. I just need some of it to handle my business tomorrow. No, I mean you've got plenty of leave to take and get roster is filled the next two weeks. Yeah, I just got off a two-week vacati. I stopped because he winked at me, and it finally clicked. We can only take up to two weeks off consecutively. Nothing says we can't take off two weeks come in for, say an hour, then go home and take off another two weeks. So I did and he signed in the paperwork stating, it's not my shift, F that bad lady. I handled my emergency literally the next day, it turned out to not be as serious as we thought and then enjoyed another paid two weeks off from work. It was great. To add to the bliss, I reported back from work to find out that this captain was fired and replaced for some kind of negligence or something. It was a great month. Edit. The captain I worked for was fired. The captain everyone liked who have me the toe stayed for a couple more years before retiring. Next story. Dig until you tell me to stop. Sure thing pops. Obligatory posting on mobile so formatting blah blah blah. So now the story. This happened back when the earth was young and MTV still played music videos in the ancient age known as 1997. I was 13 and spending yet another weekend helping my dad with yard work and home improvement projects. Not complaining, I learned a lot about home repair, and rather than get a crappy teen job in retail my dad paid me to assist him up until I left for college. Now just because I didn't hate it doesn't mean I was a little 13-year-old crap however. On this day, we were putting up a trellis in the garden for plants to grow up. Simple job, sink two posts, cement them in place and fit the trellis between them. My dad gave me a post hole digger. He showed me the spot for the first post and said dig it as deep as you can. So I went and made a foot deep hole thinking that was enough to sink the six foot posts we had. He comes back and tells me not to be lazy and dig deeper, in fact, keep digging until I tell you it's deep enough. So that's where my malicious compliance came in, I knew he would be back from the garage in about half an hour, so I went to town on this hole. I didn't stop for a break and just kept digging until the post hole digger fit in the hole completely and I couldn't open it to lift dirt out. At that point I taped a spade to a branch and made the hole even deeper. When he came back he said something along the lines of, let's see if you did it properly this time, and he drops the six foot post into the hole where it promptly disappears. There was a momentary look of shock on his face. Then he started laughing, like bent over, can't catch your breath laughing. To this day I have never seen the man laugh as hard as that. When he was done he told me that I guess I did what he told me, but now I would have to figure out how to fish the post out of the hole. Luckily it was only a foot or so below the surface and we got it out easily enough. To this day my dad still tells this story as a warning about giving vague instructions. Next story. When my ex learned to not ask me to do anything for him anymore. A bit of a backstory. 
I divorced my ex a little over 9 years ago after 14 years of marriage. I won't go into the specifics as to why, but suffice it to say he was a lying, cheating jerk. Early on during the marriage I tended to not be all that assertive until I finally had my fill and grew a backbone. He hated that. He did not like hearing the word, no, from me or in doing things my own way. So fast forward to a month after we were officially divorced, he was in his new place and I was in my house formerly the house we shared with our sons, but he still had a ton of his stuff there. Stuff I didn't want even though I paid for a lot of it, but stuff I knew he really wanted. He finally reached out and demanded, not asked, demanded I send him his stuff. Just toss it all in boxes and send it over to him. His exact words. Mind you he was only about 10 miles away from me at that point and could have easily come over to do it himself. He didn't want to do that because he'd have to see me. Something he was actively trying not to do. Cue malicious compliance. Now a lot of what he had were collectibles. No details, but some of it was fairly expensive and fragile. So I did as he asked. Correction demanded. I tossed it all into numerous boxes. Now some of the truly expensive items, I did take great care in packing them, only because I knew my sons would probably eventually want them. But for the stuff I knew my ex really wanted and care a lot about now, I just tossed it all in a box without a care in the world. Now I did inspect everything and while I just dumped them in boxes, nothing was damaged by me. I also took pictures of it to prove it. So once I closed them all up, I told him to either to get his butt over to pick it up or get someone to do it for him. He got someone to do it. Now I was not at the house when this person picked everything up, but my sons and sister were. They did not know how everything was packed. They only showed him the boxes. They told me that the person who picked up the boxes quite literally just tossed them into the back of his pickup without a care in the world and then sped away. Later that night, I got a call from my ex who started calling me a bad woman for destroying all his stuff. I told him that everything was fine before I closed the boxes up and I had proof of it. I then said that maybe next time be a bit nicer to me when making requests and reminded him he demanded I that I toss it all in boxes, but he didn't tell me to be gentle in doing so. I hung up on him and proceeded to enjoy my celebratory glass of wine that evening hoping that he was enjoying the shattered remains. Next story. Are you sure you want to do this by the book? Many moons ago I spent my youth in the army. I worked in comms and spent some excellent years doing dumb crap with some of the best guys and girls you could ever meet. One of those years of my misspent youth I was deployed to a hot and sandy location. This length of deployment was unusual for me as most deployments in the British Army are six months. The extra time was due to us being one of the first units deployed, and after supporting the initial deployment, they requested volunteers to remain and support and train some of the relieving units and newly deployed logistics headquarters HQ. At this stage in my career, I had been lucky enough to jump from deployment to deployment, and I was loving the extra money that that gave me so I happily volunteered to stay. I was tasked with supporting one of the logistics HQs. I'd run that detachment earlier in the deployment and was happy to return as it was far away from the main HQ and all the bored adults and seniors that the HQ brings. Think sweeping the desert, that kind of thing. Our little detachment was a oasis in a sea of crap. It was just six guys and girls with me as the detachment commander. I was a corporal CPL full screw at the time. The isolated nature of our debt meant that anyone sent there had to be able to operate independently, be very adaptable and open to improvise to support where required. Our main unit also liked to send us their troublemakers, but due to the nature of the debt, they could only send us people who could do their role also. So I ended up with all the best and most interesting scum of my unit, and it was amazing. For any Yanks reading, it would have been a E4 Mafia paradise. Within weeks we had a patio and rock garden set up. We had a BBQ pit, shower area gym. We'd sorted a deal with the local civilian contractors for us to receive beer in exchange for our help in vehicle and generator servicing. The best part was due to us being a comms debt, 
It was restricted entry to our area, so we were free from any surprise visits. Now that I've set out the backstory, I'll get on to the malicious compliance. The HQ we were supporting was regularly rotating its senior non-commissioned officers SNCO and officers from the deployment. They'd do the minimum time to qualify for a medal, and they they'd get replaced with someone new. It was a crappy practice that eventually got shut down, but not till much later deployments. We were fairly used to this by now and the only overhead we had has creating new accounts for the seniors. The guys who actually did the work, my peer group in the HQ, stayed the same mostly. This latest rotation saw the old regimental quartermaster sergeant Arcumus being replaced by a newly promoted Arcumus. This new guy was a prick. Full of his own self-importance, hated that we had a little island of crap free tranquility within his eyesight. I'd see him pacing outside our fence line when he first arrived, unable to comprehend that he wasn't allowed to just walk in. By this point I had been in this location for about six months and I was thoroughly past the point of giving any F. The Arcuimus hated that he had to deal with me, a lowly full screw as Ock of the debt, and myself and crew of reprobates was out of his chain of command. One day he absolutely lost his crap because we were BB King half a goat and had invited a few of his guys to join us after work for some beers and delicious goat wraps. By this stage we'd used Hessian to fence off our BBQ and bar area so that we could obscure it from prying eyes. He went off to get some of his unit's regimental police RPs, these are not real military police, just jobsworths with no real job in a unit to come and shut us down. I told them to jog on, they weren't getting in my debt, and I don't care who sent them. Apparently the next day he was apoplectic. The guys who worked with him warned us he was determined to bring my debt to heel. His solution was removing our welfare package that we were issued through his department as a favor from his guys for some services that we were providing. It consisted of a small fridge, TV and British Forces Broadcasting Service TV Decoder BFBS box. The conversation went roughly as thus. Arcuma's CPL Tosspot. It appears that there has been a paperwork error and you have been given one of my welfare packages by mistake. Me, okay sir. I'd be happy to fill that in. Shall I drop by your office? Arcuimus, you can drop by my office and bring the package, but you won't be filling in any paperwork CPL. You may have wrangled the last RQ, but as far as I'm concerned you lot can do one if you think you're getting that welfare package back off me. And if there's anything else that I find that isn't 100% correct paperwork-wise, then I be shutting that right down. You may not be mine, and I may not be able to enter you little compound, but I'm going to have you son. Every resup demand, every transport request better be completed correctly. I'm going to make your lives hell with paperwork and admin. Qui malicious compliance. Me? I'm sorry to hear that sir. I'm sorry you feel the service that we provide isn't good enough. The old RQMS was very happy with services that he was getting from us and sent over the spare welfare package as a thank you. Are you sure that it's paperwork that's the issue here? Are you not happy with phones and the internet? RQMS CPL. I have not complaints regarding the comms, you just need to complete the correct paperwork and have it authorized by me. At this point it is clear that he is never going to authorize the return of the welfare package and is very smug about it. Me, okay sir, you're of course correct. Paperwork is essential. Arcumus, are you giving me attitude CPL? Me, not at all sir, just agreeing with you. To be clear you are happy with everything else we provide to the HQ? You just want me to complete the correct paperwork? Arcumus, that's correct CPL. Me, no problem sir. Happy to oblige. I delivered the welfare package back to his stores. His guys were very apologetic. I told them not to worry. You see, the welfare package was a thank you for all the extra phone lines and terminals that we'd provided for the previous RQMSs. These expanded his and his unit's working capacity. Most importantly I had run phone line to the sleeping areas so that him and his lads could call home without using their limited welfare phone cards. I'd also laid some precious unfiltered internet lines too. Internet to deployed units is very rare, and unfiltered internet is almost unheard of for British units. 
What I was providing was immense value to lonely squatties, and it was also without paperwork. When I got back to my debt, I flicked a couple of switches, turning off all the paperwork less connections. I waited for the inevitable. It didn't take long. The first visitor was one of the privates letting us know that he'd been cut off mid-call back home. I apologized and explained what was going on with the Arcunus. He understood, not happy about it, but understood. He went off muttering about throbbers who can't leave well enough alone. The next was one of the RQMS's full screws, who I have a lot of time for. She came round and asked what was going on with the comms. She was in the office when I had the conversation with the, the RQMS earlier. We had a bit of chat about what a belter he is, and then she asked what was going on. I explained that as per the RQMS's request, we are following his example and doing things by the book and I've turned off all services without the correct paperwork. She looked at me knowingly. So what does that mean? She asked. I explained that the only services that I had been ordered to provide were for the HQ. The rest would have to request them through me and be approved by Division HQ as per orders. I handed her a copy of the request forms to be completed in triplicate as I didn't have a photocopier and they couldn't send me it by email as I just turned their kid off. She had a bit of a chuckle and went off back to her boss, paperwork in hand. You see, the only orders I had were for the six lines and terminal in the HQ. The 30-odd lines I'd laid extra were essentially me being a good bloke and supporting the mission and departments as they grew around the HQ. It was initiative and adaptability on my part. These were all now off and I had a steady stream of visitors throughout the day wanting to know what was going on. I directed them all the RQMS who had the request forms. My last visitor was the operations captain. He was a top bloke. A late entry lay officer had gone through the ranks from private to regimental sergeant major RSM and was now commissioned as an officer who had spent more than a few nights in our compound with a beer and talking shit with us. He was one of the very first recipients of a private line and internet. He asked me what was going on. He'd been round the houses so he knew there were shenanigans afoot. I told him the situation. His face dropped. Leave it with me, is all that he said, and off he went. Thirty minutes later, the RQMS was back at the entrance to my compound with the welfare package. The ops captain was with him, looming over him as only an RSM or former RSM in this case can. Me, hello sir, how can I help? RQMS very sheepishly hello CPL. There seems to have been an error, and we've found your paperwork for the welfare package. So I'm returning it, with my apologies. Me, no need to apologize sir, easy mistake to make. Arcumus, so, are we good? Me, and the other paperwork moving forward. Arcumus, there's no need for all that. Looking over his shoulder at the ops captain, we are after all on the same team. Me, we are indeed sir. I look over my shoulder and give one of my guys a nod. I think you'll find everything is now back to as it was. Arcum is excellent. Thank you very much CPL. And off he went. The ops captain stared daggers at him as he left. He just gave me a nod and confirmed that drinks were still on for the next day and toddled off back to his pit. I was never bothered by the RQMS again. I hope you guys like this video if you did make sure like, comment, share and subscribe the channel our posts.